Okay, this might be the most striking graph in all of physics. Chances are you have seen this before, or you are at least loosely aware of it. All the matter we know, stars, planets, gas and dust, everything that's made out of atoms is just 5% of the universe in terms of energy. Roughly 70% is dark energy and roughly 25% is dark matter. And while we have learned a good deal about both dark matter and dark energy over the past decades, we could not claim to understand them yet. Or in other words, 95% of the universe are still a mystery to us. Unsurprisingly, dark matter is one of the most controversial topics in current day physics. Somehow everybody seems to have an opinion on it, especially non-physicists. And many of those people seem to think it's just made up. Now, this video is for people who want to know more about dark matter and who want to understand why we think it exists. Dark matter is a phenomenon we observe at a scales of galaxies or even larger structures. We have never detected any effects here on Earth or even in our solar system. Our current theory on dark matter is that it must be different to visible matter. It can't be made up of atoms or even any constituents of atoms. In fact, the only particles of the standard model that still have some shot at being dark matter are neutrinos. Dark matter is much more prevalent than the regular visible matter, as the graph showed. There is around five times as much dark matter in the galaxy as normal matter. Dark matter only interacts gravitationally. It cannot feel electromagnetism or the strong force. It might be affected by the weak interaction, but the jury is still out on that. Anyway, in simple words, this means we can measure its gravitational pull but it will not absorb or emit any radiation, uh, neither light nor radio waves or x-rays, etc., which makes it literally invisible to us. That's why it's called dark matter. Dark, because it does not interact with light, and matter, because it does interact with gravity as if it had mass. The big problem is that we haven't measured any dark matter directly yet, so we do not know what it is. All we can really see is the effect it has on regular matter. So we know way more about what it isn't and doesn't than what it is and does. Okay, so what made us think all the things I just listed? Why do we think dark matter exists? Why do we assume that dark matter is just mass we can't see? Because that's what we've been doing in astronomy for centuries now and it has always worked out. Almost always. The basic idea is always the same. We have found laws that describe how things move. And whenever we see something not moving according to those laws, we assume there's something out there causing this aberration. For example, astronomers in the 19th century analyzed the irregular orbit of Uranus and deduced that there must be a further planet out there causing it. And they could even predict its location, where it was found by telescope. In another example, a star was observed in what seemed like an orbit, but no other object could be made out. However, as stars don't just orbit nothing, another star was assumed. And as soon as better telescopes were available, the faint second star was found, just where it was supposed to be. And if you remember the picture of black hole Sagittarius A star from a few years back, that's also how we found this in the first place. Lots of stars orbiting something invisible that had to have a gigantic mass. So we looked there and boom, black hole. The first observations that suggested something was missing were performed in the 1920s and 1930s by Jan Ort, James Cheens, and Fritz Zwicky. 
to understand what they did, let's first go to a simpler example that follows the same basic principle. Basically, a mass attracts all other masses through gravity. If you've been here on Earth for a bit, you will have noticed. You will also have noticed that you can throw things up in the air, but they will eventually fall back down again. Unless they are fast enough. There is a critical velocity where an object will not fall back down again, but escape completely, and that's why it's called escape velocity. For example, the escape velocity from the surface of the Earth is around 11 km per second, or 40,000 km per hour. An object with this speed will leave Earth and never fall back down. Knowing that, imagine a situation where you would find lots of objects orbiting the Earth at 60,000, 70,000, 80,000 km per hour, which is many times the escape velocity. You could immediately tell there's something wrong here. The gravity of the Earth could never hold objects like these. That is, in essence, what Zwicky found in 1933. He measured how fast galaxies were going in the coma cluster, and he found that they were way too fast to be held captive by the mass he could see. At those speeds, they should have moved apart a long time ago. So he inferred there must be a large amount of mass that can't be seen, and he called it dunkle materie, or in English, dark matter. Now, this was the first observation of this kind, and it was far from conclusive, but it was the first cloud on the horizon. While Zwicky's results were certainly remarkable, they weren't really alarming at the time. Because, as I already said, seemingly missing objects in astronomy were quite common and they were usually found a few decades later when the instruments have gotten better. It took until the 1960s and 70s for more data to be collected and uh, this includes the most famous evidence for dark matter. Rotation curves. A rotation curve is a plot of velocity of orbiting objects against their distance from the center. For example, the rotation curves for the planets of our solar system looks like this. And the reason for this is, an orbit is a combination of two factors, moving towards the center because of gravity and moving forwards because of inertia. Gravity is stronger closer to the sun, so a planet here needs to have a higher velocity to overcome this stronger pull and keep a stable orbit. Further out, the force is much diminished, so a lower velocity is required for a closed orbit. You can see that beautifully in the plot. The further out the planet is, the slower it moves. Almost all of the mass of the solar system is just the Sun. And this behavior should be the same for all systems where most of the mass is concentrated in the center. For example, spiral galaxies. We would expect the curve to rise initially in the central region where most of the mass is concentrated and then fall off in the outer region exactly as in the solar system. Well, that's what we would expect. But this is what we see. We cannot explain this motion by the mass we can observe. So something is clearly off here. Another observation that doesn't make sense is the Milky Way approaching Andromeda, our closest neighboring galaxy. This would only be possible if the galaxies had around 10 times more mass than is visible. From the mass we can see, both galaxies should just be moving away from each other. Again, something not adding up here. We can also look into an effect called gravitational lensing, which is the deviation of light uh, by a large mass like a galaxy. And again, these effects are much stronger than they should be. It seems there is a lot more mass in galaxies than we can actually see. One other thing that became possible in the 60s and 70s was running computer simulations. We could run the first simple simulations of galaxies and what we found out is that with the velocities and masses we observe in real galaxies, they would not be stable but fly apart. All of this evidence combined convinced people in the mid-80s that dark matter was real and that there was some problem 
that was real and would not go away by better observations. Okay, so the problem is real, meaning galaxies don't do what we expect them to do. And that's what people mean when they say dark matter is not a theory or dark matter is definitely a thing. Simply that there is a real problem and there is a real discrepancy out there. That is unfortunate, of course, because uh, the term dark matter also means a proposed solution to this problem, namely that there is some form of invisible mass out there. I would have preferred to have distinct terms here, but um, it is what it is. As far as possible solutions for this problem go, this is the list. A. There is actually a lot of invisible mass in the universe, aka dark matter. B. Our laws of gravity and or motion are incorrect or incomplete at those scales. C. All of our observations are wrong and there is no problem. D any combination of the above. The main options under considerations are A and B and currently A is favored because it can arguably explain more of the observations. However, none of the current proposals really fit all of the evidence perfectly or there are still some important results missing, so the debate is far from being settled. There have been many cases in the history of physics where we postulated something invisible so that our models would fit the evidence and this was later found to be real. For example, the neutrino. However, in other cases in history, we found that something invisible we assumed to exist did in fact not exist, like the ether. So the question really is, is dark matter like the neutrino or is it like the ether? There are of course more details to this story and I will discuss them in future videos about dark matter. So if you like this video, subscribe to be notified and see you soon.